Okay, so as you can see on the screen, Packstrap has finished installing. We now essentially in slash mount have ourselves a Linux system. Uh, actually, the system is there. The only thing we are missing is the bootloader. But before we work on installing the bootloader, there are a couple of configuration things that we need to handle. The first of which is a file known as the fstab. So if we go into our etsy directory, there's a file in there called fstab. And what the fstab does is it tells the system what directories to mount to what file systems more specifically to what partitions. So essentially it's going to tell the system where it needs to mount the partitions. So it's what's going to ensure that every time we turn on this computer slash dev slash sda2 gets mapped to slash boot and so on. Fortunately for us Arch Linux has provided us with a utility to generate this for us. We don't have to worry about uh, handwriting it. And that utility is called the gen fstab command. So all we're going to do is specify we want it in labels, and that's what L is. Uh, you can also use UUIDs, which are better, but I'm going to go with labels because labels are simpler. And tell it what the root directory is, where we have root mounted, and then redirect that output to your fstab file. So now if we look in fstab, you will see that we have our root, our boot, our home, and our swap all mapped to the appropriate devices. Excellent. Now with that done, we can do what is known as a cheroot. Uh, cheroot is st stands for change root, and the command is arch root, and then say slash mount. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a new session in which slash mount is treated as root. So now we're operating off the hard drive, essentially. Um, what we're going to do is it sticks us in the born shell, which is that sh. I like bash, so I'm going to just type bash in, and we're now on a bash prompt. And as you can see, we're in root, and our root contains all of the standard root file system information. So while we're here, we can do a, make a couple of configuration changes. The first thing we're going to do is configure locales. So there's a file in Etsy called locale.gen. Uh, I keep saying Vime. Uh, I'm Vi. Vime is the modified version of Vime I'm used to using. And it's locale, not local. There we go. What do you what you need to do in this file is scroll down to the correct locales. In my case it'd be these ENUS ones. And in Vime, or Vi in this case, uh, X is delete, so just type X to delete the pounds and therefore the those are comments so those lines were commented out now they're not and then you want to do escape shift colon wq enter and that's going to save the changes to the disk now that we've modified that file we can run the locale gen command and that's going to generate the locales that we just told it to do which is simple enough Next step is we need to edit the locale.conf file, file by adding in this enus.utf8 thing that we generated. And rather than editing the file, I'm just going to use echo. And we're setting the environment variable language to en underscore us.utf8. Eight. And we're going to redirect that output to Etsy locale.conf. 
done. The nice thing we're gonna have to do is because that's a uh, whew, an environment variable, uh, that is gonna be set to that enusutf every time that the system boots, but at the moment it's not. So we're gonna use the export command, which is used to set the environment variables for a particular session. And we're going to set our locale for this particular session. Next up is we're going to have to handle the time zones. So if you go into or list out USR, I'm going to from now on out call it user, share zone info, it'll get you a bunch of different regions. Uh, pick the region that you're in. I'm going to say US and list that out. And with it, you'll get uh, subzones. These are time zones, of course. Mine is Eastern. Uh, so pick the one that matches for you. And what you're going to have to do is create a symbolic link between that time zone and slash Etsy slash local time. To create a symbolic link, LN creates a link and the dash S tells you or tells the system to create a symbolic link rather than a hard link. And you're going to link that particular area. So in my case, US Eastern to Etsy local time. Done. Next up, set the hardware clock. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want to use UTC or local time. UTC is what you should be using though. Uh, local time leads to a bunch of known bugs that won't be fixed anytime soon. The only time you'd want to use local time is if you're dual booting with Windows, which for whatever reason uses local time instead of UTC. Now you can fix Windows to use UTC with by editing the registry, but I know absolutely nothing about that so I can't help you there. <laughs> to set the hardware clock, you're going to want to go HW hardware clock and then sys to T O H C and then say UTC if you want to use UTC or you can also tell it to use local time if you want to go that route. I'm going to say UTC. And the hardware clock has been set. Next up is our hostname. This one is really simple. There's a text file slash Etsy slash hostname and you just have to put your host name in there. And I'm going to use echo again to do it. When we first booted to the live operating system, we had a network connection because our uh, the the boot disk is part of the boot process started up our network card or not a network card, I'm sorry, um, network client. That's not going to happen again, so we need to manually tell our network client to start up. If you're on a wired connection, piece of cake. All you have to do is use systemctl enable, which means that, that the following service is going to start on boot every time you reboot the system. And you're going to want to start the DHCPD or dhcpcd.service, the DHCP client. And that's just telling you what it's doing. It's symlinking it. And you're good to go. Uh, if you have, if you're on a wireless connection, it's a little more involved. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that right now. I will do an entire video on configuring your wireless with NetCTL, which is the standard wireless client that comes with with Arch Linux. I'll provide a link in the description for uh, to the ArchWiki guide on configuring NetCTL because it's uh, it, it would take half an hour easily to go through everything there is to know about that. As you can see, wired network is much easier to set up and fortunately we're using a virtual machine so that's that okay
we have to create the RAM disk next. Now, if you pay attention when you run Packstrap, technically a RAM disk gets created automatically when you install Linux. We're going to do it again, just for the sake of it. If you make any, if you need to change your RAM disk environment, there's a configuration file you have to edit, and then it's a slash etsy slash here. That that file contains the uh, parameters for your RAM disk environment. Uh, for example, one time you'll have to change that is if you want to enable hibernation on a laptop, for example. You have to enable a hook in there. And there are a couple of other times where you need to do it. But once you make whatever changes you need, for now we're not going to do any just because the system will work without it. You do that. The M MK init CPIO and then tell it you're creating a Linux one. And that should be a lowercase l. And it's going to build the RAM disk. So we'll let that run. And once that's done, we will just have to install and configure our bootloader. Okay, bootloader time. I use Grub. There are many bootloaders that you can choose from, but this tutorial is going to be for Grub. So first thing you have to do is install it, which is just pacman-s grub. Unfortunately, my internet connection is reasonably good, so it should download and install pretty quickly. Okay, we've installed Grub, but now we need to install it again. Uh, the package manager put the files on the system. We need to run the Grub installation though. So that's Grub install. And I'm going to tell it to target this i386 PC. All that's doing is saying I have BIOS, not UEFI or EU, yeah, UEFI. Uh, if you do have UEFI, I can't help you, but again, in the description link below, I'll have lots of information about how to handle that should it come up. I think that's what you'll find on Max. Um, we're going to tell it to recheck just to make sure nothing goes wrong and tell it what your uh, hard disk, your primary hard disk is. In this case, SDA. Don't put a partition number on there. Just the the whole device and that should install fairly quickly last thing that we have to do is create the configuration file which unless you feel like manually creating one we once again have an automatic script to do that for us it's grub-mkconfig then we're going to tell it with a taco where to put it uh, in slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. Yep. And that will create our configuration file and put it where it belongs. Okay. We're now pretty much done. Uh, we'll, we will exit the cheroot environment and then you mount our devices. Make sure you do your root partition last and you use swap off to turn off your swap partition. Okay, so the system's unmounted. Time to reboot. And I'm going to pull the CD out. Well, actually, no, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go here and say boot to an existing OS. And there we go. Yeah, drag you up there. Gr that was grub. That's green there. And now it's just running the disk check and booting. 
Okay, the default login is gonna be root with no password. Last thing we'll do before I end this tutorial video is set a root password. It's generally a good thing to have. So just use the password command, P-A-S-S-W-D, and enter a password to your liking. And there you are. You now have an Arch Linux system. You can use Pac-Man to install whatever you so desire. In a future video, I will show you how to get a graphical user interface running on the system. Probably configure audio as well, which is really simple, really. Um, beyond that, I'm trying to think of what else I would need to handle uh, creating additional users I'll just I'll have a video at some point about privileges and user management and whatnot that'll cover everything I don't need to make a separate video for Arch Linux uh, yeah so just expect a video on getting graphical user interfaces up and running in the near future and really the sky's the limit from here there's so much you can do with Arch Linux as you can see it's it really is a blank slate uh, so that's all that I have for you today. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave any feedback, questions, comments, what have you in the comment section below. I'd be more than willing to answer any questions. And have a nice day. I'll see you next time.